Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Weber Days at the Iowa City Public Library. During the month of May, the library celebrates not only National Historic Preservation Month and local history, but also local historian Irving B. Weber. Irving B. Weber lived his entire life, nearly all of the 20th century, in Iowa City. His family roots reached deep into early Iowa City. Into early Iowa City, his maternal grandparents settled in Iowa City in 1839. His paternal grandparents came in 1857. Irving was born in 1900, at the beginning of a new century. He went to Iowa City Public Schools, not Lemmy, alas, and graduated from the University of Iowa in 1922. He's remembered for many things. The University of Iowa's first All-American swimmer, founder of Quality Checked Dairy, serving as its president until his retirement in 1966. Irving Weber was, an, was active in the Iowa City host Noon Lions Club. In 1944, Irving B. Weber Elementary School was named in his honor. He may be most remembered, though, for over 800 articles he wrote for the Iowa City Press Citizen starting in 1973. Irving's view of history was not one of dull retelling of facts and names. He shared the story of what it was like to grow up in Iowa City in the early 1900s, the best places to buy penny candy, the joys of cooling off in Melrose Lake in the summer, sledding parties on closed off streets. He recorded for future generations the story of Iowa City as no one else could. All of the articles Irving Weber wrote for the Iowa City Press Citizen are available online through the University of Iowa's Digital Library, a project made possible with the cooperation of the Iowa City Host Lions Club, the Iowa City Public Library, and Lolly Eggers. All are linked to the Iowa City Public Library through our online catalog. Irving B. Weber died in 1997, barely missing a century of life. Join us for the rest of the month for more programs during Weber Days. On Wednesday, tomorrow, at noon, author and Herbert Hoover Presidential Library Director Emeritus Tim Walsh will read from his new book, Images of America, Coralville. Our final Weber on Wednesday will be Tom Schulein, citizen historian, presenting a program on the history of Iowa City grocery stores from the corner store to the superstore. Upstairs, what I would like to call the best floor of the Iowa City Public Library. There is a fascinating display done by Friends of Historic Preservation sharing their 40-year history. You can take part in a scavenger hunt, learn about Iowa City's historic district, and see for yourself what downtown Iowa City looked like before urban renewal. We have also printed a number of images from our digital history collection, but you don't even have to be in the library to view them. When you're home, you can explore even more of Iowa City history through the Iowa City Public Library's digital portal history.icpl.org. I've had some wonderful teachers in my past, and I know that if I had Lisa Hall, she would have been one of them. Lisa left a message in March asking me if some of her sixth grade students could come to the library to do primary research using microfilm copies of the Iowa City Press Citizen. I emailed back to her a very hearty yes. As a librarian, we don't often, we are not often asked by sixth grade teachers for assistance doing primary research using microfilm. It was, it, I wish I had saved that voicemail because it really was special. I was doubly pleased when Lisa told me the girls were doing primary research on Helen Lemmy, a very important woman in Iowa City's history. They all, <clears throat> um, when the four girls, Lisa and a mother arrived, who's here, I think, was here, and a mother arrived, it was wonderful to see them work together. They used a list of indexed articles to find the right reels of microfilm. In case you don't remember, this is microfilm. This is what a reel looks like. It still exists. We don't have the old paper copies, but this is the Iowa City Daily Republican from June 6, 1876 to December 30th, 1876. So it was really fun to watch the girls do research. They found the right reels of microfilm, they used the film reader, and then they located the article. They all shared in the research and their enthusiasm for the topic showed. I later emailed Lisa to see if the sixth graders, who I renamed the Lemmy School Sixth Grade Girl History Detectives, might share the results of their research at the library during Weber days. Lisa spoke with Helen Lemmy principal, Mrs. Proctor, and she agreed to a program. Lisa Hall, our teacher, extraordinaire, has a master's degree in science education and the Helen Lemmy Elementary School is fortunate to have her as a teacher for the last six years. Please help me welcome Lisa Hall and the Lemmy School girls, sixth grade girl history detectives. So when they're ready, you just pass that, oops, pass that to them.
I'm going to let the girls get started with their talk uh, because they've done all the hard work. And we want to first also thank uh, the parents who drove us to the public library, the women's archives, the digital lab at the university, and the I uh, University of Iowa Special Collections uh, Library, which none of this would be possible without their help in transporting them to those libraries and also to this event. So we are very grateful to the parents uh, for all their support. And we're going to get started here with the girls. Uh, and we also want to thank Dr. Richard DeGowan for uh, telling us about Helen Lemmy and donating pictures and a very cool uh, medical scale that was used in the DeGowan Blood Lab at the University of Iowa, which kind of got us uh, interested in researching more details of Helen Lemmy's life as a medical researcher and led us on this project. So I'm going to let the girls tell the story because they're much better at it than me. Here we go. Welcome to our presentation about Helen Lemmy. We appreciate getting to tell you, tell you about her amazing life that was dedicated to helping others. We are researching Helen Lemmy's life and creating a website that contains information about her life. This came about after Dr. Richard DeGowan donated, donated photographs and a brass scale that was used in the University of Iowa Medical Hospital Blood Research Lab operated by his father, Dr. Elmer DeGowan. Helen Lemmy worked as a lab assistant in this lab during the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s. This aspect of her life we knew very little about and wanted to conduct further research. All of the sixth grade girls at Lemmy participated in this research. We decided to interview Dr. Richard DeGowan about his father's blood research lab at the University of Iowa Medical Hospital he told us about how his father had hired Helen Lemmy to be a research assistant in his lab once he found out that she had a college degree from the University of Iowa. She was the first African American to be hired in his medical lab. We found out that Dr. Elmer DeGowan and his lab were pioneers in researching ways to preserve, type, and transfuse blood. The research in the 1920s through 1940s helped preserve blood for soldiers that saved their lives during World War II. They were one of the two labs in the country that preserved blood prior to the D-Day invasion. Dr. Richard DeGowan donated photographs, letters, and articles about the lab and Helen Lemmy's role in it to Lemmy Elementary. We scanned these documents and included them on the web. Helen Lemmy's family donated many photographs, newspaper articles, Helen Lemmy's college certificate to Lemmy Elementary School, our school historian, historian Lemmy school secretary, Ms. Cindy Slutz has preserved these primary documents over the years. She gave us permission to examine these documents. Our librarian, Cheryl Vitosh, taught us how to use the scanner so we could include the Lemmy's family documents on our website. We scanned about 60 documents to be included on the website. We also took photographs of Helen Lemmy's gravesite and located where her house originally stood. We visited the University of Iowa Digital Studios for Public Arts and Humanities and met with the University of Iowa graduate students Ethan DeGross and Nikki White Dudley, who taught us how to use the Omeka program to create a historical website for our Helen Lemmy research project. They taught us how to document the sources, copyright requirements for the artifacts we included on our website. Thanks to Ethan and Nikki, we learned how to create exhibits that include text, photographs, newspaper articles, and letters on the Helen Lemmy website. We will share these, this website with you at the end of our talk. We contacted the University of Iowa Women's Archives to see if they had any artifacts about Helen Lemmy. U of I Women's Archives librarians Karen Mason and Janet Weaver assisted us with examining the Helen Lemmy artifacts that documented her activities as a civil rights advocate for African American students at the University of Iowa. They gave us access to the Helen Lemmy Book Club file that was a support group for African American students at the University of Iowa. We contacted the University of Iowa Special Collections Department so that we could examine artifacts about Dr. Elmer DeGallon's blood research work at the University of Iowa Hospital Medical School. We wanted to learn more about the research work that, they, that the lab conducted in the research Helen Lemmy assisted with. University of Iowa Special Collections 
Archivist David McCartney and Lindsay Moorcraft located documents about Dr. Elmer DeGowan's lab for us to examine. We read about the lab's research breakthroughs in blood preservation transfusion type ended prior to World War II. Found out that this research helped save so soldiers' lives in World War II, made many surgeries possible that weren't possible before, like open heart and helped make breakthroughs in leukemia research. We contacted the Iowa City Public Library so we could examine newspaper articles about Helen Lummy's life. The Iowa City Public Library in reference, Maeve Clark, showed us how to locate articles, the Iowa City Press Citizens Archive, the Cedar Rapids Gazette Archive, and the da Daily Iowan Archive by using the online databases. A French librarian, Maeve Clark, helped us locate many newspaper articles that we did not have for our collection. She helped us discover the artist that painted a portrait of Helen Lemmy and where the painting is on display at the university. We learned how to use the microfilm reader to obtain and print the articles we needed. This helped us discover and confirm many facts about her civil rights work and political activism. Reference librarian Maeve Clark asked us if we would be interested in sharing our research with the public during their May celebration of Iowa history at the library. We would like to thank Maeve Clark for giving us the opportunity to share our research with you today. We, would, we also appreciate learning how to use the digital newspaper archives from you. We want to also thank Nikki Dudley White and Ethan DeGrosse for their amazing <laughs> technology skills and for teaching us how to to use cool programs like Ameka. We would not have been able to do a cool project without, your, without their technology experience and support. This is our website that we created. There's the mouse. This. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so this is a picture of Helen Lemmy that is in one of our papers. Okay, this is Helen Lemmy's life, um, her childhood. Helen Lemmy was born on February twenty fifth. <laughs> Helen Lemmy was born on February twenty fifth, nineteen oh four, in Gunnell, Iowa. Her name was Frances Helen Renfro. Her parents were Eva Craig and Lee Augustus Renfro. Helen was the oldest of six children. Growing up, Helen Lemmy worked as a housekeeper to help, her pr to help provide for her family. When she was in eighth grade, she won first prize for a history essay. However, the DAR would not give her this award because she was an African American. She was the valedictorian for her graduation class in 1928. When she graduated, she was given a $5 gold coin scholarship as a scholarship medal. Her siblings graduated from high school. Her sister, Edith Renfro Smith, was the first African-American female to graduate. Providing housing for African-American students. During the 1930s and 1940s, the University of Iowa denied African-American students access to, to the on-campus university housing. Helen was one of the only three African-American women in the Iowa City who opened their home and pri provided housing for African-American men attending the University of Iowa. The Black Women's Club of Iowa provided housing for African-American female students attending to the University of Iowa. A 
African American male University of Iowa students were completely dependent on housing provided by private families. Helen's home at 603 Capitol Street became a home way for, from home for Mac American uh, African American students. Helen and her husband, Alan, provided housing for hundreds of African American students attending the University of Iowa. Helen was alumni of the Democratic Party. From 1943 to 1944, she was president of her precinct committee. She was a member of the Democratic Black Caucus. Helen was a delegate, delegate to state and country con conventions. In 1944, she attended the Democratic National Convention, where she had voted for more African American representation. In 1946, she was elected president of the Iowa City Legend of the Women's Voters. She, she cared about the local government issues as well as the nat national issues. From 1963 to 1966, she was an active member of the Iowa City Human Relations Commission. Helen advocated for and, for and helped bring about the council-managed form of gov government in Iowa City. She served as a secretary of the Johnson County Advisory board of the Hawkeye Area Community Action Program. She was a member of the board house, board's housing committee. In 1955, she was selected to be Iowa City Woman of the Year. Helen, Helen was also the first African American woman to be named best citizen of Iowa City. Helen served as a pres as president of the Henry Sabin School PTA. She was elected to seats of, on the boards of the YMCA, the Girl Scouts, and the Civic, Museum, the Civic Music Association. Helen was president of the Iowa City Council of Church Women. She represented her church, First Baptist Church, on the on the United Campus of Christian Ministry. She was devoted she was a devoted member of the First Baptist Church in Iowa City. Here's some pictures, like newspaper articles of her work. College education and work in the medical lab. Helen Lemmy's college education and work as a medical research technician in internal medic medicine. <laughs> medicine department at the University of Iowa College Medicine. After graduating from Grinnell High School, she attended Fisk University, Nashville. Tennessee in 1920. She faced I can't see it. discrimination while attending Fisk University and decided to leave the university. In 1924, she decided to continue her studies at the University of Iowa. She studied science and biology at the University of Iowa. During this time, Helen worked as a research technician in the Department of Internal Medicine at the UI College of Medicine. 
Dr. Elmer de Gallen hired Helen to work in his medical research lab laboratory. In the 1920s, it was very unusual for an African-American woman to be hired to work in a medical research lab. She worked in Dr. Elmer de Gallen's lab that was doing pioneering research in blood preservation, storage, and transfusing. This lab became the nation's second best, second blood donor center. The blood donor center was founded at the University of Iowa Hospital in 1938. Dr. Elmer de Gallen conducted extensive research on blood and plasma inventory management. This lab helped create blood typing procedures, develop methods to transport safely, store blood, and develop transfusion techniques. This research was put to use on battlefields during World War II. Because of the research conducted at this lab, blood transfusions and blood bank storage practices were in place to support soldiers on the battlefield. Dr. Elmer de Gallen created the shock and transfusion service in 1942 for the U.S. Army and Navy. While attending the University of Iowa, she served as the president of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. The Delta Sigma Theta Sorority sports public service programs that benefit the African American community. Helen graduated from the University of Iowa in 1928. Helen Lemmy's death, Lemmy Elementary School, dedication in the U of I honors. On December 15th, 1968, Helen Lemmy died from, from smoke inhalation due to, the, to a house fire in her home. She was 64 years old. The cause of the fire of the, co the, the cause of the fire was never discovered. In 1970, the Iowa City Community School District built a new elementary school at 313. Er, 3100 Washington Street. The Iowa City Community School, school District named the new school Helen Lemmy Elementary School in her honor. A memorial fund was established to purchase books for the library in her honor. When the school opened in 1970, 200, 230 students attended the school. They decided to name the school in her honor because Helen Lemmy dedicated her life to helping others and as a tribute to a woman who valued education. Helen and her husband, Alan, provided housing to, uni to University of Iowa, of Iowa African American students who are not allowed to live in the dormities on campus because of their race. According to an interview Paul Lemmy gave to the Cedar Rapids Gazette on March 31, 2014, she provided a home and guidance to many young college students who were, ex who were experiencing an ingrated American for the first time in their lives. They were trying very hard to be successful in that world that in many cases fought hard against them. Helen Lemmy was the first African-American woman to have a school named after her in Iowa City. In the fall of 1970, Helen Lemmy's son, Lawrence and Paul, and many friends of Helen's attended the dedication of the school. It was an honor for her son, Paul, described as remarkable. In an interview with the Cedar Rapids Gazette, given on March 31st, 2014, Paul stated, how would you react if you simply went through life doing what you thought needed to be done and then found out later others were, great, were grateful for your efforts? In, 19, in, in, 19, in 1984, the Helen Lemmy Reading Club was founded by, by University of Iowa African American graduate students. This uh, club's goal was to focus on African American literature, invite African American guest speakers to camp campus, and to serve as a support group for African American students attending the University of Iowa. In 19, in 19, thir 19, 1993, Helen Lemmy was one of the first graduates to be inducted into the UI's Black Alumni Association Hall of Honor. You can keep that. So now we can ask questions of the girls and their teacher, and our two 
Grad students, are you here? Can you raise your hands? Excellent. So I'm going to start out, and I'm going to ask you a question, and you all can answer, or whoever wants to answer can do that. So what was the most interesting thing you found out that you didn't know before you started? Wait, can you repeat that? <laughs> yeah. What was the most interesting thing you found out that you didn't know before? Well, the first, the interesting oh, thing. Can, can you tell where you went to? Because they all, I think if I'm right, the girls were divided into groups of four, and they went to special collections, women's archives, the State Historical Society Library, and then here. Is that right? And the digital studio. And the, uh, the digital studio. OK. I, well, I, where did I go? Special, Special collection, and there we scanned pictures, and we saw a lot of pictures of the Dr. DeGowan Medical Hospital, and we saw, and there was lots of facts about Dr. DeGowan too. Does anybody else have something they want to share? Well, we didn't know that she actually worked at like a medical lab, so we pretty much went deeper to, into the research to find out more about her life, of what happened to her and what she did. So did you have to go back and visit again? No, well, I think a few of us did, but not all of us did. So those were, you were special collections. Who went to the women's archives? Can um, you say anything about what you discovered? Um, when we actually went there twice um, because there was a lot of stuff there. Um, the first time we went there, we focused on what was called the Helenami Family Papers. That was basically had stuff that was just like newspaper articles or stuff like that that was on her and some letters that were written between John Bacon, which was our principal when we were in, what, kindergarten, I think? Yes, kindergarten um, between him and her son Paul so that was what we so we just looked through all that stuff basically to find out see if we could find out about the time when she was a medical research assistant and then the second time we went over a file about the Helen Lemmy Reading Club we wanted to find out more about that so it was just like a support group kind of for African Americans and reading and stuff because it was kind of like hard for them so they would just go there and read books about a lot of them were about like African culture and stuff, so they would just go and read that, and that's what we read about the second time. Can you pass it down that way? Pretty much what she said, so we went there the first time and we focused on the family papers, and then there was the book club that had a book uh, list of great books that they all read, and as she said again, she pretty much summed it up. But um, <laughs> she, um, <laughs> yes, I'm fine. That had, um, they focused on African American culture and the um, Underground Railroad sometimes, et cetera, et cetera. So. So who went to the State Historical Society Library? We went to the University of Iowa Special Collections. Oh, you didn't go to the State Historical? Yeah, we oh. went to the University of Iowa Special Collections, sorry. So how about you girls who went at the end, the ones who came here? Did you find anything that you weren't expecting? Well, I learned how to use microfilm, which I didn't know how to use before. That's going to be but a skill that you'll use yeah. the rest of your lives. Yes. <laughs> Um, if you're lucky. Yeah. And then I also learned that there was another portrait of Helen Lumi because I knew that there was one portrait that I think we might have had at our school. I don't know. Or we had like one that was kind of like a picture of that portrait. But I thought that there was only one portrait, but there was two. And that was kind of unexpected. What I thought was interesting, I didn't know she was valedictorian, which means she got really good grades. 
She got like all A's and stuff. Yeah. I don't have anything more to say. It's kind of weird. So we went to the special collections, and it was kind of cool to see all the different things that uh, Dr. Elmer DeGowan and Helen Lummy did for to help transfuse and uh, help blood and have everything with World War II and help save soldiers' lives, and it was kind of cool to see everything. Oh, we had to wear gloves so that it wouldn't mess up the um, pictures and articles, because they had a special kind of paper that if you touch them, if your skin got all them, then it could um, like make them uh, break down. Do we have any questions from the audience? I'll repeat it if you want to ask. Girls, can one of you talk about what the scale? Oh, so you worked with the secretary at the school and the librarian? Yeah, they did. Um, what the scale was is it was a piece of equipment from the medical lab that Helen worked at, and it was donated to Helen Lemmy by Dr. Elmer DeGowan's son, Dr. Richard DeGowan, and he donated that and some pictures from that were taken in the medical lab of his father and Helen Lemmy doing research. So that is just a brass scale in a light, in a light frame thing, I guess, at our school. And I mean, you could go look at it if you wanted to, but it's there. Do you have a picture of it on your website? Uh, do we? we have a YouTube video of Dr. Richard DeGowan. It has a little help with the YouTube video. Um, right away, you do on there, and Olivia, did you interview Dr. DeGowan? You guys yes. Know? So yeah. there's a YouTube video. Is it? So can we go? We have a link to it um, on our website. On this website? Just not yet. Okay. So when we go home tonight, we can all go to helenlemmy.omeka.net and explore on our own. R yeah. Rachel, did you have a question? So, girls, let me repeat that because we're we're live on channel twenty. Yeah, you're going to be famous for the rest of your lives. You're going to be on Library Channel 20. So your wow. question was, what was the most inspirational thing that you discovered about Helen Lemmy? Am I talking? Yes. Okay. You, you, you want to talk? talk. You, you can go ahead. Um, but, well, she would, she um, helped African-American um, students. That's what I found, like, really inspiring very nice um what i found most like brave i guess is i mean she did house african americans and i think that's kind of what she's known for but something i didn't even realize is all these things that she was a part of i mean she was i best woman of the year best citizen in iowa she was in legal women voters she was in all this stuff and I just think it's amazing about how she did all this stuff and she still raised two kids and housed stuff for African Americans. And I just think she's a great role model, just like juggling all this stuff. That's what I think is most inspiring. What I found that was pretty inspiring was when she was had a house fire she's housing students still and there's still students in there and she died getting them out and that's what I'm pretty sure they had like this speech at when we got the leopard do you guys remember that that we're here in kindergarten I think mr. bacon kind of talked about that and 
he was said he was all really proud that she helped them get out and she <coughs> decided that it was more important for them to get out than herself so what i found inspiring and also surprising was if you ask a lot of kids at school like well what did hella mummy do they would probably answer like oh they let people who were at college stay in their house and that's probably what i would have answered too but i also found out that she helped with collecting blood and typing and transfusing is that what it is for day of World War II and it was kind of shocked because I just thought she had people stay in her house for college but she did she also did a lot of other stuff anybody else what I found inspiring was that she saved so many lives first off with the blood transfusion and that saved a whole bunch of soldiers' lives, but also with the college kids, if they hadn't had a place to stay, they probably wouldn't have gone to college and their life would have been a lot worse because they would have been had it having worse jobs, less pay, et cetera, et cetera. So she saved a lot of lives, not just keeping people alive, but keeping people's lives nice. Does anyone else? So do you, do you think the school will use your website? Do you know? So this, this website will be on the school website. So all the Lemmy Leopards to come will be able to see it. And do you have something you'd like to say? Yeah. Uh, what I thought was really inspiring was how she'd never let anything um, take her down. And she didn't care what other people said about her. She, How she helped um, preserve blood and save many other l people's lives. What I, really, what I really didn't know was that she help Dr. DeGowan, um, like, transfuse blood, and she saved many lives. Meanwhile, World War II, I thought she, she just let African-American people live in our house. Does anybody else have anything to say? Well, I thought she was brave enough to open up her house as, like, an apartment to a lot of African-American people because they, those people don't have any, anywhere to live and she didn't know all those people, so she was brave enough to open up her house to strangers to help them so they could live at her house and go to school. Lisa, do you have anything you'd like to say? Well, we think it's wonderful. So hats off to the girl history detectives and a round of applause. <laughs> and because this is an Irving Weber event, uh, Irving Weber, as you know, was the, well, as you now know, because I told you, if you didn't know, was the founder and president of Quality Check Dairy and Dairies, and he loved ice cream. So a lot of our events that have to do with local history and Irving Weber have ice cream. So we have some ice cream for you. So please stay and talk about anything you like, what kind of history you want to do in the Anybody want to become a historian? All your hands shoot up. Yay. 
maybe you'll become a historian or maybe you'll become an archivist or at least now you've got your you know that that it's fun and exciting to go to libraries and to explore and to talk to people who know those collections and maybe you've got some things at home and you can talk to your parents or your grandparents and get their history because when they're gone you won't be able to have that so do spend some time talking to people and if there are letters at home maybe think about scanning those and preserving them so thanks again girls and let's have some ice cream I'd like to say thank you to Mrs. Hall because she's organized all of this and done all of this. <laughs> she doesn't want to come. <laughs>